Hello! Shuyan here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. The raised floor is complete, so I'm installing the decorative column as a kamui today. I said I'd install the half-visible decorative column, but I start with the kamui on the doorway. In the previous video, I installed a large 24cm wide shiki at the doorway. This time, I will use two parallel timbers to mix the kamui with the same width as a 24cm shiki. There is no such width for a kamoi, and even if there is one, it'd be difficult to install a 24cm wide kamoi at this height. So I will use two timbers to make a wide kamoi. First, I install a 3.6m long kamoi. The doorway is 2.7m wide, but there is a door pocket next to the family altar room that accommodates shoji screens. Including the door pocket's width, the kamoi will be 3.6m. This room is 7.4 square meters, which is small. Usually, a Japanese-style room has exposed columns at four corners. However, they are not used in modern houses. Exposed columns are expensive, so they are used sparingly. This means only one side of the kamoi will join the column. Since it's a little tricky to install, I will use a thin, half-visible column that serves as a mullion. The dark color of cedar looks beautiful for the kamoi. I prefer cedar to hinoki cypress for this kamoi. The warm color makes the room feel cozy. However, it doesn't look good if the color of each kamoi is different, no matter how dark the cedar color is. I try to match the color of the kamoi as much as possible, but when different colored kamoi are delivered, I sometimes have to return three out of the five delivered. It's best to have all the same color. I notch between the grooves for the ends of the kamoi and shiki, then install the half visible column. There are many parts that have a similar function. For example, mume and kamoi, half visible decorative column called hanbashira and mollin. If it reaches the ceiling, it's called a hanbashira. If it only reaches the kamoi, it's called a mollin, hodate, or door stopper, toatari. I think we don't have to be particular about the name and a part like something is acceptable.
Now, I am planing the kamoi. Of all the timbers that need to be planed, a kamoi with several grooves is the easiest because the surface is flat and the wood has short widths. It is also less likely to tear out when planing. If the doors or screens are not hung and slide on the shigi, I chaffer the grooves of the kamoi. In the case of hanging sliding doors or screens, the kamoi grooves shouldn't be chaffered because there will be a gap between the rails. Now that the timber is finished, I install it. The doorway width is 2.7 meters, but the kamoi is 3.6 meters long. This is to include the width of the door pocket. After installing the kamoi, I will install a movement which is like a kamoi but with no grooves, parallel to the 2.7 meter kamoi at the doorway. This makes the head jam the same width as a shigi. The side of the kamoi is grooved to insert the mume about 1 cm deep. The kamoi side is grooved so that the mume is 15 mm higher. It is possible to install the mume lower, but I make sure the mume is higher if it's on the outer side of the doorway so that the outer mume will not be visible from the room. Now they are joined and turned out to be a 24 cm wide kamoi. Next, I install a kamoi with a single groove. This kamoi will cover the window frame. Since the window frame is not made to accommodate shoji screens, the shoji screens will be hung in front of the window frame. So the shoji screens will be the same width as this window. The kamoi installation is simple, but the groove doesn't reach both ends of the kamoi. I really get nervous when I start grooving with the groove cutter. If the groove shifts, the whole common will be ruined, and I must neatly finish the groove in front of both ends. As I mentioned earlier, I can't chamfer the groove in the case of a hanging sliding door or screen because the rail goes into the groove. I install a single groove kamoi. As well as the previous kamoi, only the right side will be joined. Of course, I will snugly attach it to the window frame. I'm using large clamps, which might seem a bit excessive, but I didn't bring small ones on site. Better too big than too small. I have now installed two kamoi at a right angle in the room. Next, I install the half visible column that I mentioned at the beginning. I just cut, plane, and set it up in place. If this is not installed, the otoshi gake, a lentil for the tokonoma, can be installed. The otoshigake can only be raised slightly higher than the kamoi of the family altar room. This is because there is a large pine beam at the front of the otoshigake, which also serves as a crown molding. 
so the front white plastered wall will be small. If the otoshigake is raised too high on the small wall, it may appear awkward. So I will raise the otoshigake by about two fingers when installing it. I will first install the otoshigake in the tokonoma. In family altar rooms, one side of the kamoi will be on the other kamoi, so it's easier to install. So I first install the otoshigake, which is more difficult to install. This is the original way to install the kamoi in a Japanese style room. I install the otoshigake in the tokonoma. The tenon is cut at the middle column's top so that it can temporarily expand the space to join the otoshigake's tenon. After joining, I'll move it back in place. Now the kamoi for the Japanese style room is in place. All the kamoi have dark colored cedar. Three shoji screens at the doorway will be stored in door pockets and open all the way. The room is open and versatile. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.